My name's Archie Mann, it's September 19th, and you're watching the UBC Weekly Show. Well, on our opinions page this week, it's about why petitions at UBC are really important and everyone should sign it because your signature makes a difference, even yours. That was really cheesy. Some students at UBC have started a petition because they're upset that no public consultations have yet to be done for the Gage Self Committee meeting. Don't! <laughs> <laughs> oh no, and then, and then AMS security might be unionizing. This week's Our Campus is quite good, and it's about Alan Gar, who is the resident beekeeper at the UBC farm, as well as a very prolific uh, political journalist in uh, Vancouver. This week we are covering the UBC football team who beasted against Alberta 40-30 to and are 2-1 uh, in the season and are looking to make a serious splash in the Canada West this year. You just heard from our news editors about the petition surrounding Gage South. I'm joined here by coordinating editor Justin McElroy, who wrote a column about the subject. Justin, so when did this all begin? All right, well, this all began, Arshi, in 2008, when the university decided that they were going to permanently protect the UBC farm, the 24-hectare patch of land in the south of campus. They also said that the housing developments slated for that land had to be transferred somewhere else on campus. And at this point, where campus and community planning would like to put it is in the area known as Gage South. How is the university going to respond to this over the next few months? UBC is going to respond the same way they've been responding for the past year because it was actually last year where this issue was first brought up. The university has simply said, this is a long consultation process. We need to talk to all stakeholders. We're committed to finding the best place to put this land, whether it is in Gig South, whether it's in North Campus and around Chancellor Place, or whether it is in South Campus. But they've also said that there needs to be permanent housing and a permanent population in the center of campus to support the retail outlets that they're planning for the alumni center and around the sub and for this entire center of campus. So it's a tricky situation. What are the next steps for this campaign? Today, Stephen Toop, UBC's president, is holding his annual town hall. It's expected that some students will ask about Gig South. This is a key opportunity because the president doesn't speak publicly on controversial issues like this that often. So you heard a little bit about Toop's town hall. We at the campus to find out what students want to ask their president. That's an interesting question. I'm not sure what I would ask. I don't know who that is. If he would like to introduce another major. I always wondered if they changed up the view passing because they knew that people were like scamming them. Maybe like something about tuition. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's always on our mind. I helped out a lot of friends. And I just wondered if they caught on or if it was for some other reason that they changed the UPS system. What's his favorite pair of underpants? Sports! On Saturday, the UBC Thunderbird football team play their first home game of the season in front of 1,500 fans. And right from the start, the story of the game was UBC starting quarterback Billy Green threw two touchdowns in the opening three minutes of the game. He went on to rack up 250 passing yards, completing 21 of his 27 tosses. Green also ran for 105 yards, including 78 of a 99-yard second quarter drive that ended with a handoff to running back Dave Boyd, who took it for the touchdown. The UBC would go on to win 40-30 in what was their first home victory since 2008. In women's soccer, UBC's fight to stay on pace at top of the Canada West standings began with force against Manitoba at home as a Rachel Sawyer free kick bounced tantalizingly in front of the net before Jermaine Frazau found it and buried it. Frazau would strike again just before the half, having a picture-perfect cross into the goal to make it 2 0 It was her partner in crime in the evening, Sawyer, who was able to sink a beautiful set piece as the free kick snuck in perfectly past Bison's keeper, Chloe World. And Sawyer was determined to match Frazau's tally as the forward grabbed the three ball to seal the match for nothing. Well, that's all for this week, UBC. I'm Archie Mann, not wearing pants since 1918.